Okay, so basically this session we are going to talk about um, that this is a main topic itself. Okay, activity leadership. So yeah, just to confirm again, like, if you are treating this session, yeah, you can stay in this room. And if no, then uh, please go to uh, another to breakout room for living diversity and demonstra uh, demonstrating the pretty sessions. Okay, so before we start, right, just some uh, quick uh, introduction about myself again. Uh, uh, yeah, basically I'm the LCP of Pfizer and UNMC. Uh, the University of Nottingham, Malaysia, if you guys know, is near Samania area. And yeah, I'm uh, 23 years old this year. I think, uh, yeah, quite old among other classes, okay? And then, yeah, I'm the mechanical engineering students currently in my year three. And then uh, this is my fourth terms in ISAC. So basically, this is some brief introduction about myself. And yeah, just some explanations before we start, right? Uh, yeah, feel free to uh, on your cam if you feel comfortable with it and uh, do stay focused throughout the session and also uh, be authentic because later on I'm going to ask you some questions. Uh, can you just be very honest? Um, don't judge others and don't need to feel scared to be judged as well. And yeah, stay hungry to know more. Uh, because I believe everyone is here to learn. So yeah, hopefully we can get uh, all things out of it. Yeah. Okay, so let's start. So before I start, just to confirm, uh, right now it's already being recorded, right? Like it's, we are in recording procession from uh, D1. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we already start recording, right? For this session. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks for uh, confirming. Okay, so let's start the session today. Okay, so basically, I hope you can come with a uh, quite calm mood. Um, yeah, even though uh, the, the in the morning plenary session just now, maybe it's quite emotional, but I hope you already managed to settle yourself down uh, during the break session itself. Yeah, so just come with a uh, calm mood. Lah. Okay, yeah, so basically, uh, yeah, I believe you choose this session for a reason. And um, looking at the terms of activating leadership, so what does leadership mean to you? You can type in the chat box to uh, have some interaction with me. Or even you want to arm yourself to say something, it's also fine. I love human interaction. So if you can uh, arm yourself to speak, then it's also fine. Yeah. So you can take some time to think and also type in the uh, type in the chat box. Yeah. What does leadership mean to you personally? I think leadership is like uh, ability to uh, lead people and I mean the willingness to take action at the very first, at the very front. Okay. Thanks. Uh, may I know who's uh, speaking? Is it? Yeah. I oh, I it's waiting. Oh, it's waiting. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thanks, waiting for your answer. Okay, so yeah. I can see some. Yeah, I can see some uh, answer in the chat box. Empower others, make change, able to influence others, and make uh, an impact. Uh, the action to lead a team or organization, able to lead a group or an organization. Okay, interesting. Okay, thanks everyone for your participation. Okay, so the next question I have here for you here is, uh, what is treat that a leader needs for you personally also? Yeah, what is a personality that a, a leader needs? Yeah, you can also type in the chat box or even like, uh, we can just now answer, uh, I mean yourself and answer. Yeah, self-discipline, whoa, patience, over-minded, making decisions, able to start a first step, responsibility. <laughs> Vivian? Yeah, Vivian. Uh, I, yeah. yeah, I think being a leader, being a leader is like uh, placing quite selfless. Uh, mm. It is not that selfish. If like being selfish, right, uh, we will only say you and I. But being a leader, we will change the you and I into we. I think that is the thing that I learned, maybe. Oh, okay, okay. Nice, nice, nice. Thanks, Vivian, for your answer. Okay, so I have seen a lot of chat. Uh, we have covered a uh, bigger picture, willing to guide, good communication, uh, able to accept feedback, better suggestion, accountable, not being biased. You and I equals to we. Okay. Wow, able to make decisions on social media. Okay, thanks everyone. Yeah, you guys are really participative enough. I feel very proud of you. Okay, okay. So yeah, so let's start. So this is just to a uh, very quick warm-up question for all of you here. Since uh, you guys choose this question, right? Then definitely you have your own definition on why it's actually uh, leader, uh, leadership about. Okay, so uh, after that, I'm going to ask you some very personal questions. So um, if you have your notebook with you or even have your device with you, uh, it will be better because later on you might need to uh, jot down some of the uh, of your answers. Yeah. So uh, um, the first questions I have here for you is, yeah, when is the last time you feel like you are not being understood? So these incidents can happen in maybe out. Um, I believe it's maybe out of Isaac or maybe in maybe your in your past experience. When is a when is the last time you feel like you are not being understood? Yeah, so we will need you to uh, recall a little bit on what happened in the past. Yeah, and if you are done, you can put uh, maybe a wave there. Yeah, just think about the time itself. Yeah, oh, 
Okay, wait, wait. Seems like it's very, very fast. Yeah, you have around two minutes time uh, for it. Yeah, but it's fine. You can just, uh, yeah, you, you can just uh, think a little bit. Wave, wave. Yeah, I will continue if uh, I already see more wave or the time something. Yeah, but just take your time. Actually, how do you feel about that things in the current situation? Yeah, because I believe it's already happened. Then uh, by now you think back like, what is your thoughts about it? Yeah, like have you already let go of it or you just, uh, you still think that it? Um, yeah, maybe, maybe you have other kind of feeling to a certain incident or something. Yeah. Just be very honest to you, okay? No worries. Yeah, it's the same. If you are done, then you can put a wave. Wave, wave. More, okay, have more wave. Wow. Okay, have more wave, wave. Okay, Tanya is a very interesting hand sign. Okay, wave, wave. 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 Okay, so I believe that um and okay, anyone else needs more time because I think two minutes is almost up. Yeah, you can uh unmute yourself and or even time a chat box if you need more time. If no, then I will only eat. Okay, uh seems I I I receive a lot of waves then uh and there is no any request uh that you need more time, then I will move on. Yeah, so basically right now we are going to into a breakout room sharing. We are we're going to repair as in you are going to share with uh, one another, like in the in that uh three questions or four questions that I asked you just now. Yeah, like like the whole incidents, why you feel like you are not uh being understood. But uh remember before you go to go into the breakout room, uh yeah be very authentic and then uh, don't judge others and don't refuse uh, to get judged as well yeah, because i think everyone is here to learn and also to uh, to embrace each other uh, personally okay so uh for yeah for one you can help to create the uh breakout room now then you can go to a breakout room and you have six minutes to share it, okay yeah have fun in the breakout room sharing my meaning mm. Uh, but when I tried to explain it, it was like, no, 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 We know you better than yourself. We are your parents. I was like, mm. yeah, they already understood my meaning. And then they don't listen to my explanation. I was like, I feel very upset. And then I was like, mm. why my parents like that? And they weren't listening to their own child about their opinion or explaining mm. to them about, their, about the real meaning of my words. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question will be, what happened that time? Uh, yeah, I was having argument and then what was the approach to it? <laughs> Not really, can't recall because it's already two years. Due to MCO, I can't really see my parents actually. So when I think back, what is, uh, what is your thought about it? So I was like, yeah, I was learning like, okay, if in reality, when I argue with my friends or maybe with others, and when they misunderstood my meaning or they just want to argue with me, I was that I will be quiet because if the guy of the opposition don't even want to listen to you, they was like ignoring all ignoring all your explanation. So I was like, yeah, I was learning this from my parents. With my, uh, learning this from my argument with my parents. So uh, I'm not really angry actually. I was feel really upset, but when I think of it now, I was like, yeah, no need to be upset though because maybe they think they are right. So yeah, that's all for me. Uh, thanks. Okay, thanks, Kartik. Yeah, actually, actually, I thought you uh, you need more time to share. Then you know, it's not only <laughs> the uh, the plenary sharing part first, but it's fine. Like, uh, thanks for sharing. By the way, okay. So, uh, anyone else still want to share? Like, I think we can uh, give like two more sharing from the plenary. Oh, yeah, Irene, you can go. Okay. Uh, hi everyone. So I'd like to share a bit about my experience. 
So like the first question was uh, when I felt not being understood was actually this one time during like in high school, I joined another like organization. At school, it was quite big, you know, everyone was like joining, you know, so you don't want to feel left out, right? So you just want to join in and like, you know, make more friends also, right? So, but then since there's like a lot of people, right, there's, they will also have meetings to like, you know, discuss some things, you know, but then the meeting is like in a big group. So they usually like ask for opinions in like the projects and stuff, you know, and then uh, I of course have my own opinions to voice out. But then sometimes, you know, when I do voice out, like it happened like one time, uh, I feel like they're not like listening to my opinions, but it was maybe because like, you know, there's a lot of opinions, a lot of people, you know, but then I, at that time, right, I felt like I was not being listened. So I felt like, uh, you know, like a bit useless in a way, you know, like I'm just like there to like sit down and like hear people, you know. Yeah, so at that time, I felt, of course, I felt like annoyed, uh, a bit angry and a bit sad also. But uh, about when I think about it now again, I feel like it's a bit funny because <laughs> I feel like there's so many people there and just like sitting there. Yeah, but then I'm not angry anymore because I feel like I just don't want to like dwell on it I just want to like forget about it and just like learn from it you know maybe like next time if there's like something about this I can just like uh, maybe like assert my dominance even more like say more about my opinions I guess yeah yeah so that's it for me okay thanks Irene uh okay let's move on to Vivian mm, well for me right uh I think the the conflict happens is uh, between my parents also like it seemed like Kate that my parents is actually in Singapore far 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 away from me okay until like I cannot really like contact them and they cannot even like have my food okay so the conflict between me and my family happens when uh, it's due to my personality I am a person who is uh, how to say was like really passionate when I'm really happy so when a passionate person that feel like she really needs to recharge for me, right? I will just shut off my phone, shut off my laptop, turn off my Wi-Fi and data. And I will keep me alone, like from outside from the world being disconnected. Like error 404, Vivian and fun. Okay, huh? uh, okay, fine. And the story begins like that. So that time I'm feeling so stressed and I'm trying to uh, okay, except from everything, except from the whole world. Uh. So like when my family trying to find me, right, and then uh, they couldn't find me, and uh, I think uh, they are really like being a bit aggressive like me, and then what they do actually, they kick out me from the family group, which means the heaven for me, you know, like, like it is really important. So after that, after that, uh, when I went well, and then uh, I just try to reconnect back to them, but I found that I've been kicked out. And what did I do? Actually, I was just like I spent a whole night like typing a long, long, long message to each of them, like telling them I'm so sorry, and then, and then I know that you love me, and then like yeah, we we will be having two ways communication since that time. Uh, it's too late until I'm nineteen right now, but this is the first time that we are having two ways communication. And then after that, uh, I think like being talked directly is actually the most important things. Even if I'm having conflict with my friend, I just, wait, hello, stop. I have something to say. I, I would just like, you stop, you stop. Hello, hello, give me some time. I would just be like that. And then like when I reflect back in that uh, moments, right, I think that, uh, okay, I'm not feeling angry, but I'm feeling so sad and also a uh, grief sometimes because, yeah, Yes, family, right? And then family was my sky, and then yeah, that was my heaven. But it's okay for me to right now to let go, and I think that this actually shaped me into a person who was really straight, straight to talk about conflict, and then straight to be passionate and straight to be myself. Yeah, I think this is actually what shaped me right now, lah. And thank you for listening. <laughs> Okay, thanks Vivian, Irene, and also Kartek for sharing. Yeah, definitely it's not easy for you to uh, come to plenary to share your personal stories. And thanks for being very authentic because it's what I expect uh, to happen in this space as well. Okay, so just to wrap up every of your sharing, right? Actually, um, like when you think back the when you think back the root cause, actually, what is what is it? For me personally, a lot of times when people that don't understand us, right, it's because uh they are lacking of empathy. As in uh if if you know this word before, definitely um yeah, you, you know what 
uh, what do I mean? Okay, so definitely later on, I'm going to share more like what is actually uh, empathy about, but this will be one of the because why uh, every time conflict happens or people uh, don't understand us. Yeah, so um, in this world, as what three of you shared just now, uh, you all also talk about one thing is about communication, right? Yeah, we are dealing with people and communication definitely is unavoidable. And we cannot deny that the people that came from different backgrounds and that they will have different opinions of uh, point of view all the times can even from your parents that have different point of view of view that you can have certain uh, conflict or even argument with them. I think it's very, very common. Yeah, and if it's not being handled well, conflict can happen very easily. Yeah, you can see even this long distance, you can fight with people. Even, even in virtual setting, you can have a lot of conflicts happening here and there. I think this is very, very um, common also like for me personally. Yeah, and this is where when empathy steps in to turn the situation better. Okay, so yeah, this, this word came out again. I believe when you guys are choosing a session, this word also came to your mind that um, maybe this is one reason why you choose this session as well. Okay, so uh, when we talk about empathy, so actually what is this about? So uh, yeah, if you look at this picture itself, because I'm the person, I like picture, la, so I, I put a lot of pictures in my slide. So yeah, you can see the empathy here. Yeah, um, it, like the person, the purple person can think as how the, the black person thinks, then the black person can think as how the purple person thinks, okay? This is in the illustration form. But uh, sometimes, uh, I would say a lot of times, people might have these misconceptions as in uh, empathy is equal to sympathy, but actually it's not. So uh, what does empathy really mean? It's like we can understand someone else's truth experience. Like if you see it in the picture itself, um, yeah, there's a person with a stick, then the, the black person is holding the red person, and he can really know how the red person feels because um, before maybe before this, he was having an accident, then he had to rely on the stick to walk as well. Yeah, but um, for sympathy part, it's like, oh, I just see you uh, walking with a stick, then I just feel bad for you, but I couldn't really know how you feel. As in, I just feel sorry for you, but if you want me to connect with you through a therapy, then it's sorry, it's very hard for me to connect. So that is the difference between empathy and sympathy. And it's a con misconception that people usually uh, will have when it comes to uh, empathy. Wisdom. Yeah, so to make it short in a word form, empathy is to truly understand by putting yourself uh, into other shoes. Okay, so um, just now, all the incidents that you guys shared by Vivian, by Irene, by, uh, by Kata, you can know that uh, like, uh, why usually your conflict happens is that your, your, maybe your parents or your friends, they don't really put themselves into your shoes. That's why they have conflict or they don't, they don't want to accept your opinions, then you guys even have some uh, arguments there. Yeah, and think back the time uh, when you feel you are not being understood, what if the person practice empathy? Um, definitely the situation wouldn't turn out the same way right? because um, it's, like, it's like they'll try themselves to put uh, themselves into your shoes to think on how, um, like why you, why you think in this way or why you behave in this way. Yeah, so uh, for me personally, when we want to understand, uh, when we want others to understand us, we can be the one that take the first step to understand them first. As in, we can be the one that understand why this person behave in this way. If the person don't accept our opinion, if the person uh, cannot understand us though, but why, why, they, uh, why they think or why they behave in this way? This is something that I always think of. We can be the one that take the initiative. Okay, so what triggered me to think in this way is because, yeah, um, before this day, some incidents happened in me and um, it, makes me, it makes me realize that actually em a lot of time empathy works in two ways. So just as what it is shown in the picture itself, you can see um, yeah, the, the two people that can really uh, show empathy towards one another. Okay, and yeah, here comes to my story. So yeah, this is my team, uh, my executive board. If you guys know, it's like the, the top management of one uh, local chapter, you guys know. So yeah, this is my team, my uh, my EB team. Yeah, like our team is the expert and we uh, we have a lot of people. Yeah, and at that time, I thought I'm a, I will be a leader that could always practice empathy. I know how you feel because uh, I was a vice president or I was um, the executive board for one term already. So I can always know how you feel. Yeah, and... I didn't put much focus to build myself with it. As in, um, yeah, during the beginning of a term, um, for, for one executive board member, we have uh, some things that we want to uh, brush out of ourselves to get ourselves ready for the position itself. But at that time, this is not something that I always uh, wanted to practice. So I, I don't even think that I need to brush up these things. Yeah, and uh, as a president, I always want one thing, which is I want the good results in our operations. As in, uh, I want to achieve the goal versus actual. I want to see uh, we have a lot of youth uh, sign up for our events, etc. Et this is something that I want to see. Yeah. 
And in, okay, I, I put my photo here. Hope that it doesn't hurt your eyes. Okay, yeah, in our monthly one-to-one, -one, yeah, the question, uh, I believe you guys know it's one-to-one, -one, right? Like it's a monthly session given by your TL. And the question that I ask frequently is why your operation progress is so slow? As in, like, hey, why the result is not there? Why, um, like, why uh, last time you say that you need more time, but in, until this month, um, the result is still not there? Like, why is your people doing this? Center, center? Like, this is the question that I will always ask in every one-to-one, -one, if the department is not performing well. Yeah, and eventually, my people that feel very, very stressed to talk to me because it's like every time I approach them, right, text them in Telegram, then they know what I want to ask really. And when it comes to one-to-one, -to -one, they are not enjoying themselves and they, they, don't, they even feel not comfortable to join our weekly meeting. Our weekly meeting is during Monday, then um, yeah, you can see when they join, their face is very stressed or because they are going to update their progress, then I'm going to question them. This is how they feel every time when they come to, when they want to join the meeting. But the sad truth here is that I never know it. I never know the truth. I never know that yeah, they are not comfortable with it. I never know that um, they, they don't, uh, that they feel stressed like whenever I uh, approach them or I reach out to them. Yeah, and and that time, um, because I'm 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 quite demanding as well. I always have a lot of requests since like, yeah, why you are not why you are not performing? Then I will ask you, okay, you you do this, you do that, something like that. Then, uh, my people, I, I feel like my people don't understand me. Like, like why they always have a lot of complaint when I request for more. Yeah, and I I was having a lot of self drama. I would say yeah, like I I feel like my people don't really understand me. Then every time I bring up one thing, it's always complaint from them. Yeah, and I always uh, tell these things to my coach, frankly speaking. Yeah, and I thought I didn't do anything wrong. Like, frankly speaking, I thought I didn't do anything. I thought I'm, I'm doing fine because as a president, uh, I should care about my operations. I should care about um, like, like my uh, local chapter progress. Yeah, but until uh, one point during April, which is the third month uh, after I officially uh, onboarded as a president, yeah, that is during my one to one. The O to O stand for one to one. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to type very long because uh, I want to want it to make it want to make it shorter. Yeah, during my one to one with one of my members, which is my current uh, vice president of people management, and then uh, one fun fact here is like she is actually one of the person that is very close to me. Uh, even before we joined Isaac, like we joined Isaac during the same time, and then uh, basically she stayed throughout the throughout the year, and um, like I was her leader. Uh, since last year, yeah, when I was vice president, she uh, she was my director. So, so actually, we are very close, and then we can talk a lot of things uh, very openly. Yeah, and in that one to one, uh, we had a very hard conversation that I can I can um still remember until this point. Yeah, so the same question was asked by me again. Hey, why uh, the progress of people management is so slow? Like why? Because if, if, if you came from people management team, you know that there's a lot of percentage you want to achieve this and that. And it's something that I asked I ask her, like, why this, this? Because in last month, you tell me, yeah, you need more time to settle down. Your people need more time to adapt to the, to the role itself. Then, okay, I give you time. But right now, like, why the progress is still like that? Yeah. And uh, she came up with some reasons as in, yeah, like my, my people that still uh, need some time, like the, the whole concept, we really need more time to do with it. But what was in my mind that time is you are, you are not doing good enough and you, you are finding excuses, trying to uh, avoid that, trying to tell me that, oh uh, yeah, you, you have put in a lot of efforts then, but the re result is still not there. And you are finding excuse for yourself. That was something that came to my mind that time. Yeah, but um, personally, I neglect how much efforts that she has put in all this well to make all these things happen. Because when I choose uh, them as my uh, executive board member, they are uh, very patient and then they have a lot of things to want to achieve as well. But uh, in the reality, it doesn't turn up like that. Then I always think that, yeah, whatever reason you give is an excuse. Yeah, and um, after that, she uh, she keep quiet. Then I feel like, okay, there is something wrong already because um, like I know her since long time ago that I know that she seldom behave in this way unless there's something uh, really serious happened to her. Then, then I, when I questioned her more, she started to open up. I still remember that time a scenario is like this. I questioned her, then she don't want to tell me. Then I just sit there, like we, we just chill. I, I remember that time it's already until 12 a.m. something. Then uh, she like it's late night, then a lot of emotions will come in. Then uh, when I uh, questioned her more, then she don't want to tell. Then I just stay until she tell. Then finally, luckily she told me that time, um, she started to open up to tell me uh, how, how does she feel uh, all this well. Yeah, and... There is one sentence that she asked me, I believe you know how I feel, but do you even care? And 
this question when when she asked me right then i feel like oh fuck like all this well uh do, do i even care i was i was shocked i was shocked for for a few seconds and i then and then i don't know how to reply her yeah like i don't know how to answer and i just kept quiet like, like legit in the, in, imagine in that one-to-one -one conversations then like it, it's like very awkward because because after she says something then i don't know how to answer then uh, both of us just keep silent yeah and she started to open up to me to share all the thoughts or how much struggle that she faced with me and it's, it's not something that she shared with me in the past few months during our one-to-one -one. yeah perhaps she also also feel very stressed and then but she she didn't feel very comfortable um because she feels that like i don't even care yeah and at that time uh in that com after that conversation uh i started to reflect and realize how i'm uh, unempathetic am i as a leader um or i i will even say that uh i feel like i have changed after i become a president yeah i started to not really care about um like the people feeling then uh, everything that came to me i always think is an excuse for you uh to not achieving your goal yeah i never stand on their shoes i never um think on i never care on how they feel all these things then until the conversation happened my um my vice president that time she uh, she started to open up to tell me every single things that came to her mind and it's something that um frankly speaking is is one of a one-to-one -one that i can even remember until now yeah because of all the hard conversation that we have but luckily it happened because uh self-reflection happens after that as well and i started to know the truth yeah and the whole conversation was very direct but i appreciate it because it has allowed me to understand the reality of uh the whole incident yeah like um all this while i i, I was doing something wrong yeah um i really did wrong i don't really care and i um i just want results but actually in fact it shouldn't be in that way and um th at that time i spent some time to really settle myself down because uh after that conversation uh i still remember i couldn't really sleep well because it's like i i started to uh, have a lot of self-reflection and definitely spent some time to settle myself and um after that i decided to make a change as in i know that if, if i don't change then uh the things will become worse and then this is not something i want to see within uh, my eb team and I started to understand how they feel first by creating a safe space for them. As in, uh, in our conversation, it's no longer, hey, like, why are you not achieving your goal or this well? But it started by greeting, so how, how you actually feel all this well? Yeah, then definitely at first they feel shocked because they feel like, hey, um, this is not Anderson usually will do. Because in how one-to-one, -one, it's always about operations, it's always about why your goal is not, why you, why you did not achieve your goal, etc., etc. Yeah, but then eventually, uh, when I keep practicing this, they started to open up to me slowly. And I finally, I got to know them better as a person, but not a vice president. Because if I really see them as just vice president, maybe I'll see them as a colleague, just came to a place to work together with me. But in fact, that's not, right? It's definitely, uh, they are my members, then their experience also matters. Yeah, so um, my members started to open up to me and I really get to understand them uh, as a person, like how is their life outside of Isaac? Yeah, like what, uh, what is actually stopping them? What is their personal struggles? All these things. It's something that I finally uh, get to know when I think it's during June that time when we have more and more personal conversations. So it, it actually took like around two months time for them to slowly open up to me. Yeah, and eventually, um, after my members that uh, that talk to me to uh, about their personal things, then I also uh, got to share my personal feeling to them as well. Yeah, and uh, they got to know me uh, better. Yeah, and they also got to know uh, how I feel uh, on this one well after I changed the style. It started with uh, we communicating on the why itself. Like, okay, so um, they they also question me a lot, and I think through throughout these two months, there's a lot of um. The, there's a lot of conversations happening and definitely there's some hard conversations uh, happen as well but i feel very appreciate because of uh, all these conversations i finally get to understand my uh, members better then uh, they get to understand me better as well as a leader so we can move together uh, as a team to bring the local chapter forward yeah that's why uh, about all these incidents that happen to me i always believe in uh, practicing empathy uh, comes in two ways as in uh, if today my vice president uh, of, of people management yeah she knows that i'm not being empathetic but she don't want to take the leads to tell me everything 
then maybe until this point, I still think that I did not do anything. I still think that, yeah, I'm fine with it because I want operations to be done, well, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, but because she took the leads, then I started to do self-reflections and I started to change, to make a change. Yeah, that's why I always believe in practicing or empathy comes into ways. We can always be the one that take a lead. Yeah, so definitely this is not a story on how I lead my team, uh, but it's about how I treat one another as a person. Uh, if you notice, like, uh, I have a lot of conversation with my, uh, all of my uh, vice president, all of my members. Yeah, it's about how I treat one another, treat them as a person itself. Yeah, so uh, in Isaac, yeah, um, when it comes to this topic, we have our values, activating leadership. But one thing I uh, wish to highlight here is, it's not, activating leadership is not purely about leading people. And it's also about how we treat one another. Yeah, and uh, I hope that uh, after this space, you can uh, maybe, if, if you are in the same position with me before, then uh, yeah, you can start to practice empathy. Uh, starting from today and you realize how wonderful it is started to communicate more on the why started to try to understand why the person behaved in that way why the person uh going that way then don't avoid hard conversation because hard conversation is something that will make you uh really understand why this person will go in this way or why this person feel in that way yeah this is something um one of my biggest realization that i have as well uh, throughout my president journey and yeah, remember, empathy comes in two, way, uh, two ways and it always starts from you to take the lead first. And that's all for my sessions. Uh, we end earlier, so uh, now I'm open for any kind of questions because I can see how proactive you guys are. Uh, so I actually allocate quite a, lot, a long time for questions. So you can ask me anything. Uh, I will share with you what is in my mind or what is the suggestion that I can give. Yeah, and um, yeah, feel free to be authentic as well. You can share me um, like what happened or like how can I help or how can I support you. Yeah. This. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you can, uh, yeah, if, if, you, if you feel shy to talk, you can also type in the chat, then I can, um, I can answer your questions. I think, I think we can open for around 15 minutes time because uh, this, session, this session is supposed to end uh, at 12.30. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Tanya. For Any advice how to strengthen the bond between your members? Okay, this is a very uh, interesting question for ba uh, for Brian, uh, strengthen the bonds. Okay, I think definitely it depends on uh, like the, the personality of your members. Okay, if um, I I heard there's a lot of ways on how to uh, strengthen the bond between members, but um, like a lot of time, what we do is like you you have a, a lot of casual conversations outside of Isaac because as in uh, during meeting, a lot of time we talk about operations, right? Or we talk about other things, but we seldom talk about uh, personal conversation, uh, just some personal sharing. Uh, a lot of time after my after my executive board meeting, right? We'll just stay back and then we just chit chat. We just chat about other stuff, but we don't talk about uh like okay, how's your operation going on? Because all these things are already covered in the meeting itself. Yeah. So um yeah, if if you feel like you want to connect better with someone, then uh, sometimes it's just like uh, a very uh, small greeting or like you just are saying, okay, how are you doing all these things? Like some casual conversations outside of Isaac can definitely help. But if you want to go with a team, um, usually people will also go with something called team space as in they also hang out. Okay, back then in physical, they hang out together. Lah. But I think right now, uh, a lot of them, they will come together to play some on online games together. Yeah, this is something that I observe as well. But if you really want to connect with one another personally, right, some casual conversation is still needed. Yeah, I hope that answers your questions for Ryan. Uh, so for uh, wait, uh, how do I pronounce? Uh, Katrina, I hope I pronounce your name correctly. Uh, sometimes we can help, but let personal bias affect ourselves or connection. So how do you think uh, we should deal with that? Uh, we can help but let personal bias affect ourselves. Uh, maybe for Katrina, you can give me more uh, context because I, I a bit cannot get the answer. I mean, the question is... Uh, yeah. well, personal bias as in, mm. you know, um, mm. something like prejudice. Maybe you've heard something about this person mm. in your uni, rumors or stuff like that. Maybe mm. you like affect communication, maybe... Mm. Yeah. Ah. yeah. Okay. As in you you don't know this person at first, but you hear some rumors about that person, right? Uh interesting. Uh I was having this this kind of um this kind of 
experienced before as well. Uh, like what I tell myself is um, I will I will totally neglect all the personal aspects. Then I try to understand that person as a person. As in, uh, I just I just try to start conversation with them. Then uh, I started to observe the person's behavior. So does this person actually behave in that way, or it's just because of maybe before this they are in they are, they are in a team working together, but uh, their working style doesn't really match with one another. That is not being solved openly. That ends up become drama. Then become rumor. Yeah. So it depends on how we really want to. Uh, see this person definitely when uh, you, you 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 can have some uh person you can have some personal bias i mean at first but um i hope that uh if you really want to know this person or you cannot avoid to work with the person right um it's the best that you can observe or start some casual conversation with this person first before making any assumption yeah this is the this is the advice or suggestion that i can give lah, because um yeah, I, I always believe it's very unfair if we just judge someone based on uh, the story told to from others. Yeah. Okay, uh, for Katrina, I hope that answers your questions. Yeah, or if, if it's not being solved, you can continue to tell me. Yeah, like maybe you can question me more. So, so far. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, I have a question for Natshwa as well. Can you share how you initiate and engage with conversations with your members? Because sometimes it's not easy for someone to open up and talk with us, especially if they're introvert. Okay, this is very interesting. Uh, for a natural question, uh, I think one fact we, we cannot deny is everyone likes story. We like to listen to story. So every time if my person is very introvert, right, then I, uh, I started to tell them uh, my story first. Like I, start, I started to open up to them first as in, um, because it's not about only about telling story, but it's also about like, I, I trust you as a person that I know that you are not going to leak this thing out. Yeah. So it's like some, sometimes I will start some very casual conversations or even tell them what, uh, what have been proof, all these things. Then, um, eventually they will know that, oh yeah, this person trusts me so much Then maybe uh, it's someone that I can trust that I can start to, um, like talk to them more about myself. Yeah. How I initiate and engage, um, yeah, I, I hope that answer the question for Nashua because that's what I do. Okay. Uh, so for Nashua, does that answer your question or is quite vague or general Then you want more context? Okay. Yeah, if, if I didn't answer the question, uh, just feel free to tell me, guys. I'm uh, totally fine to help. Yeah. So you can just question me if you have any. How can we do with a big conflict? Uh, for example, the person does not care about group project and like to copy and paste someone work and causes conflict. How can I deal with it? Okay, does not care about group project. Okay. Um, big conflict. Uh, uh maybe for Bernard. Uh, Bernard question. I mean, I know like the situation is already happened before or like it's, it's still ongoing right now. Like it's like maybe you guys still in one group project then um, like you still want this person to, I mean, to, to solve it immediately. Ongoing but not one group. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I always believe in whenever we have a conflict, right? Um, the high conversation is needed. Like not gonna lie, uh, a lot of time we, we, we just started the, the conversation with them, then they'll know that, okay, how serious it is. Because like if they don't care about the projects, then they like to copy and paste um, the works, right? Then uh, definitely this is something, I think this is something more than conflict already because it's about integrity as well. Yeah, so um, try not to avoid hard conversation when it's necessary as in you can just tell them hey um like can we can we talk about something else because i feel like this is not this is not cool and uh it's somehow affecting the whole team's uh, atmosphere also or the whole whole group project process as well yeah because i believe when you copy and paste other group project then when your lecturer calls it then it's about like plagiarism or those things right yeah so uh if you don't feel okay uh be direct and to tell them like how do you feel like this is not correct then um uh, then let them uh, let them aware how serious it is because maybe before this this person work with a group that like to copy work from other groups then he or she thinks that is totally fine yeah, but when it comes to your contacts, it's definitely not fine because I think uh, like for whoever is in this plenary, you think that it's, it's not fine as well because this is not something that we want to happen in our uh, course, in our coursework. Yeah. Uh, does that answer your questions for Bernard? Yeah, 
cool cool thanks yeah i understand that sometimes uh especially if you if you really care about how people feel or, or what you will tend to avoid a uh, hard conversation because this is what i think also but i uh, one thing that always trigger me to take from action is also like i know that if i don't tell it out then the the problem is not going to be solved yeah then it's it will always be there it will always be in my mind but it's not being solved then i i will always i i'm going to have a lot of personal struggles so so uh why not just talk it out to let that address the the issue to that person okay uh yeah we, we can still have more questions if you guys have yeah um hi anderson i have a question hi. yeah um have you ever deal with people that Mm. Um, they they are not satisfied with you, but they mm. did not confront you directly. Mm. Instead, they post it maybe on social media, like Instagram, and then you know they are talking about you. Have you ever been in this situation? And if yes, uh, how did you deal with it? Mm. Ah, okay, okay, got it. Uh, so so just to convey, it's hundred percent. You know that this person is talking about you, right? Hundred <laughs> percent. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, I think this happened before uh, when I was in my second yeah, se uh, secondary school form four. Uh, yeah, because I studied in SMK. Then that time I was I was also working with a group of people. Then uh, I was in your club. If you guys know this uh, this club before, then I was president that time as well. Then my my um, my executive board that time they are not satisfied with me. Then they post me in social uh, in social media. And I would say that time actually how I do it is very not mature like. I, I scold them back. Uh. Then, <laughs> actually, this is not correct, frankly speaking. But if you were to ask me this time how I will deal with it is um like I, I will really have a space to to uh talk to them. As in I started to I start to have uh initiate a conversation to tell them, okay, so uh, actually all this while you have any you have any comment. But I think um I think before this, right? Um uh, because we are all here to solve the problems, um but at first, settle your emotion first. As in, when you see it, definitely you feel very angry, you feel very upset or even disappointed. But the first thing you should you should solve is definitely your own emotion first. When you settle your own emotion ready, then try to initiate a conversation with that person. Yeah, to, to tell him, okay, so actually, to tell him or her, so actually how do you feel all this well? Uh, yeah, so do you have any feedbacks that, that you have? Then you, you can tell, uh, then uh, allow that person to reopen up. Then uh, at that space, um, yeah, just, just listen to that person. Um, and then um, I would say be very open-minded to see what, uh, what is their point of view. Yeah, and then um, maybe sometimes they don't like your behavior is because they don't understand why you're behaving that way. Right, then after, after they address it, um, if it's something that you think that you really did wrong, uh, and if it's something that you think that um, it's just a difference of working styles or like um, this is how this is uh, who you are or this is how the way you be, uh, you behave and then just tell them uh, very openly like why uh, why you behave in that way why you uh, why you talk in that way etc etc yeah, because a lot of time I can say that uh, when people post in social media right like about all these things right it's because they're very very angry then they didn't settle their emotion first if they already settled it then they will not post it so this is how I will deal with it. I mean, for, for LC. And just, just a disclaimer, that time in, in my secondary school, that time after I fight with them, then the whole team gets separated. As in, like, it's no longer a team. Then I feel, I feel, I also feel very regret because uh, the way I handle it is not mature. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. So uh, any question? Well, let me scroll through a little bit. Uh, no question. Yeah, yeah. So what do you, because like we talked about confrontations and like yeah, yeah. real conversations and everything, right? Yeah, so yeah. how, what, what will you do if let's say like mm. you want to have the conversation, but the other party doesn't want? Mm. Uh, and and mm. also another question, mm. like, you know, confrontations are like really hard. I feel in my opinion, very uncomfortable, very real. So mm. how would you suggest to make it, to confront them, but not, but they won't feel like insulted or mm. hurt or mm. you know stuff mm. like that yeah understood okay so there's two questions one is uh wait, let me think what the first one is uh hey, sorry i forgot the question again uh they might repeat the first question yeah because i pay more wait, wait, wait. i still forget the I... uh oh what do you do when someone doesn't want to uh, okay doesn't want part to of the happen. conversation yes mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I think if you were to ask me, um, if that person don't want to be in the conversation, definitely they have a reason. Like maybe that that maybe the whole situation is already out of control. Then they just like sometimes people can hate at, uh, another as in I don't even want to see you in front of me. Yeah, I don't know. This is something that actually happened or not. Like I mean, for uh, for Ashley, yeah. But this is something that actually happened, right? Then um, yeah, you, you can tell them because usually when conflict happens, it's like uh, if let's say it's it's in the team, then um, then no matter what, the problem has to be solved, right? Then um, like what I will suggest here is if let's say that person don't really want to talk to you, but you really want to have a space with you, then this person even already blocked you in social media or, or any other things. Then if let's say it's in the team, lah, tell your team leaders. And if that person is your team leaders, uh, maybe you can tell your VP or, or maybe your other uh, members to, to so, sorry, not members, uh, maybe other VPs to, or, or uh, I think can seek help from a VP to uh, really initiate the conversation itself then when it comes to that conversation right it's not only both you like if let's say both of you think that it's a bit hard to start a conversation have a have a middle person as in this person is very is totally neutral from this incident itself which means this person will not have any personal bias and is not involved in the incidents then uh, for the second question itself i think um if let's say uh, you, you don't want to be direct right uh, i guess it's more towards uh, addressing the behavior as in um like if let's say this person I, I don't know how serious it is but if let's say this person is i like, don't even care about um the members behavior then like like maybe how i how i did for my team before like, then i think it's like okay you, you can address them so uh yeah can you be more uh can you be more uh can you be more empath uh, empathetic after this or can you be more da -da -da after this like just address the behavior but not hey like saying that hey uh, you are sucks or you are like uh, you are a bad leader etc etc try not to go with personal attack but address the the behavior but then it's the best if you can remember the time like when this person uh behave in that way yeah i think this is something is very uh it's very important as in they know that oh yeah maybe sometime maybe at that time they already uh that they, they did not mean it or it's because they are not in a good state then they say something wrong yeah so to really address the behavior itself then to tell them yeah you, you totally not fine with it yeah so this is uh some suggestion i can give for ashley la, but uh if uh i understand that maybe right now it's like in the plenary that but if you want to share with me more like the, for the more context uh later on i'll leave my contact uh down there you guys can also connect with me to uh to ask more questions yeah if it's not being solved uh, i'm totally fine to help okay yeah uh at least based on my past experience this is how i solve it when it comes to the person don't want to have a conversation or don't want to get involved with it yeah so and... meaning to say rather than pointing out specifically you like say in general terms la, like mm. things like i think this you know you could have this better this better and not saying like you know i think your style is like really really bad blah, 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 blah. Yeah, not, not saying that you are, you are sucks or what, like try to avoid because it's like you don't like the person's behavior not like you don't like that person eventually right it's like maybe he he, did, he or she did something that triggered you to feel like okay i just like an example maybe um maybe they are not accountable or they did not keep their promise and this is something that triggered you because you already keep your promise but you did not fulfill it then you just have okay so next time can you be more accountable or like um at least if you cannot do this then can you uh can you actually tell us etc like this kind of thing try to uh try to be direct in terms of addressing the behavior but not addressing like the style or those stuff. as in behavior like le logic come with the incidents and the, and the time yeah so that's the answer your question actually okay yes thank you <laughs> i i like how uh shafika said that so yeah you don't like the behavior not the person he or she is yeah and let me scroll up a little bit uh yeah talking about team right if the team was separated how can you get them back through hard conversation too uh brian do you want to give more context as in that that you guys still in the team but now is everyone doing on your own uh on your own pace and then don't have any conversation don't have any synergy etc right or oh, brian mm. um how about Mm. How about uh, still in the team mm. and working together? Mm. And then because separated, so difficult to do the things together, right? 
So mm, yeah, how right. to get them back? Yeah. Mm. Okay, understood. Uh, so just to confirm, uh, eh, wait, uh, just to confirm, is it okay? It's a bit hard to say this. Uh, okay, I believe in the team you have a leader, right? The does the does the leader aware of this situation also, or the leader is the one that's separating the team? Leader is the one who's separating. <laughs> Ah, so basically, it's like the leaders did something wrong that caused the whole teams to get separated, mm. right? Okay. Um. Then is did you try any initiative before as you try to connect everyone's back? Mm. Yeah. Um. Uh, that is my past experience actually. Um. Mm -hmm. Because, um, at that time, uh, mm. I, I'm, I said that uh, I'm not uh, I don't have ability to handle this kind of stuff. And then I just, I, what I do is, uh, I because we have team, right? So some of them is close to me, some of them is not really close to me. So I only grab the person who close to me, and then the person who always have the opinion about me, always don't like me, I just let them be. Because what I think is, you already hate me, so, so whatsoever, I don't care about you. And then, but of course, I know uh, that is not good for in terms of productivity. By that time, I I don't know how to settle it, so I just mm. let it be. So until mm. the whole term finish, mm. so of course uh, I have a bad name. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah. So just yeah. to ask, yeah, uh, uh, advice from you, yeah. Okay, so if let's say it's still ongoing right now, right? I think uh, if let's say right now your TL is the one that is um. Okay, TL uh, stand for team leader. If he or she is the one that um, uh, that is separating the team itself, then I, I think I will really suggest to straight away tell her like, okay, uh, I feel like like our team is uh, very separated right now. Then uh, I, I don't feel very comfortable. Then uh, can we actually solve it together? As in, because uh, usually when um, when when we have any team issue, it's like we, we should really sit down together to talk it out, to talk out all the all the behaviors that uh, someone did before that is totally not fine, then just just be very authentic to share it out. Then after that, right, one action step maybe you guys can take is like to reset your explanations with one another. Because I think every time, uh, if you already have your onboarding space with your team, one thing that, that always covers explanation settings, right? Like what is your working style? Like what is the leader's leadership style, etc. Et uh, what do you expect from the team? What do you expect from this journey, etc. Yeah, but these kind of things at the very beginning when we set it, um, like a lot of people that don't really dare to voice out uh, their real request because they don't feel safe yet to be in the team. Then they'll just say something very general or uh, respond to message, la, uh, be responsive la, or, or any, anything, this kind of a very, very general one. But deep down there, they know that there's still something that um, they want. But maybe at that time that they feel like it's a bit demanding, then they feel like um, not very comfortable to voice out yet. Yeah, then eventually if uh, expiration settings part is not being done very, very well, then eventually uh, they might have some um, team issue. No? Yeah, so if let's say now it's already happened, then uh, really talk to your TL to, uh, to see what will be the uh, way forward there. Then if let's say your TL is not trying to, to help, but you really care about the team, right? Then I would say um, it's, um, it's better that you can find externals, maybe, maybe your VP or what. Okay, this is um, like based on my uh, past experience or based on my uh, the, the stories I heard from others are like whenever they have issue when, when directors and, and members then usually VP will be the one that uh, will step in to, to see how they can solve it. Yeah, to really sit down together to solve the problems and uh, to come up with one uh, explanation settings again with uh, between one and another. Yeah, this is the suggestion that I can give uh, for Brian. Yeah, or you can tell me more if you have more uh, contacts or something. Yeah. I... Yeah, thank you. Um, actually, yeah, so far already become history. Just uh, hmm. yeah, I, I just uh, hmm. yeah, uh, just initially yeah, I don't handle very well. So hmm. I, I would like to say a uh, uh, a black spot in my life. Yeah, on this uh case, yeah, not handle really well. Yeah, uh, yeah. So hopefully I can do better next time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Okay, okay. I think if you were to ask me, the one way to avoid definitely is to ensure the expectations is clear at the beginning of a term. Yeah. 
So this is the part that um, I know if, if you guys know in the in every uh, Isaac experience right, at the beginning that I will set these things on, then you'll feel a bit tedious, but it's um, necessary and it's important to set it at the beginning. This is why they come up with explanations. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, actually, uh, like now, now it's already the lunch break time, uh, but if you have any question, you can still uh, you can still stay back and ask me, uh, but if you want to leave already, let me go to next slide. Yeah, you can connect with me in IG, then I, uh, if you have anything, you can text me there also, or uh, you can text me there also, or even you can find my Telegram contact in the delegate group chat. I do, uh, yeah, I do put, uh, join the, I do join the uh, group chat itself as well. Yeah, so can feel free to connect with me uh, yeah, if you wish to have more conversation with me afterwards. Yeah, but uh, I think right now, if you are hungry already, you can go for your lunch. And yeah, I think that's it from my session. And I hope you enjoy uh, uh, and get something out from this space itself. Uh, yeah. Uh, drink water. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks. I'll drink water. Okay, thanks everyone. You can go uh, for your lunch. Then I think the lunch time is until uh until 2 p.m yeah so remember to pay attention to the delegate group chat and then uh they will send the link yeah like which session that you actually sign up then uh then you can go to the respective link uh, that if you didn't sign up uh, for any sessions you can join and join participations for the part two yeah okay thanks everyone thank you thank you thank you thanks thanks bye bye have a great bye -bye. lunch okay bye bye see you guys later bye Bye-bye.